You need to stretch out your 10 pegs, guys. You need to put yourself in a learning curve. You know, remember what the Bible talks about, stretching out the tent pegs, stretching out the tent pegs, enlarging your tent. Well, you know, when you stretch out a, a cord to enlarge the tent, it puts stress on it. Okay. God wants you to go through the stress of a learning curve. He wants you to expand your conscious mind, expand your ability to handle more things, to do more things. And, and that without exhaustion, that, that there's grace for it right now, that if you'll stretch yourself and go into an area that you haven't gone into before, God will breathe on it. God will breathe on it. And look, he's going to give you the revelation of what that is. Some of you have already had those thoughts in your mind. You've already thought, I should do this. I've always wanted to do that. Now is the time where you not only need to, you must. You must follow through with what God has been putting on your heart. And you cannot look at what the economy or the inflation or the stock market crashes or anything else are doing because we are not under the world's economy. We are under the kingdom economy. In Ecclesiastes, right after it says, invest in seven or eight ventures. Now, because you do not know what disaster is coming upon the earth. It says, whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. You do not know the path of the wind, the Holy Spirit, or how the body is formed in a mother's womb. So you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Stop watching the wind and the clouds. Stop watching the economic situation of the world. You're not under that. You're under heaven's economy. You need to plant six or eight ventures because you do not know what is coming upon the earth. God will breathe on businesses, churches, media outreaches that are being built now because you had the faith. You ventured out. You took a risk and you went through this journey of this audacious undertaking to do so. And God will bless you. You see what's coming Ma, I say this with much soberness, and I say it with much urgency. What is coming upon the earth is not that far away, and when it comes, we will not be able to work like we did before and establish new businesses. That's why we must establish things now. In John 9, 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh where no man can work. Did you hear what I said? The night cometh where no man can work. You must work the works of God now, while it is day, before the night comes and no one can work. And if you do everything now, if you begin to establish now, if you begin to occupy now, new lands, new territories, new businesses, new ideas, new outreaches, they will be established by the time disaster hits the earth, and then you will be walking in that security of everything you built in this hour. Amen. 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 Now, for those of you who don't, if you don't, if you don't take this prophetic warning seriously, if you don't finally move on the dreams that have been in your heart for years, if you don't finally take action and go to work with the minas and the talents that the Lord give you. Instead, you keep them hidden in the ground. They will actually be taken away from you. Your opportunities will be taken away from you. The open doors will be taken away from you. The supernatural financial provision that would come with them by the breath of the Lord and by the hand of the Lord will be taken away from you. That's what it says in that Luke scripture. It says, when the Lord came to the third servant, he said, what did you do with your meanness? He said, well, I was afraid of you because you're a stern man. Um, you know, uh, so I buried the mina in the ground. And, and, the, and the master said to him, why did you not at least put my money in the bank? Why did you not at least put it into an investment? Why didn't you buy some stocks or some crypto or some Bitcoin or something? Do something with it. Why did you do that? So I might have collected interest from it. And he said, and the master said, take the mina away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. And they said to him, but Lord, he has 10 minas already. And he said, I tell you, everyone who gets and has will 
be given more. But the one who does not get and does not have even what he has will be taken away. And then the king ended with this. It said the indignant king said, but as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them in my presence. Wow. We must go to work with what the, the talents, the opportunities, the dreams, the visions, the promises that God has given us or they our opportunities will be taken away. I'm telling you by the word of the Lord, you're going to start seeing ministries and churches and businesses that are, have been doing well for years financially, that have had much influence. That people know their names, that their names are worldwide known. Those things are going to, those businesses and ministries are going to start crashing and burning and going down. And then you're going to see no names, people that were have been fighting and praying in the secret place for years who are obedient to the voice of the Lord, being raised up, being the breath of God hitting them, finances exploding for them. Just opportunities, new connections coming because... They were obedient to diversify and occupy.